everyone. Hope everyone is having a great day. We are back with Dub Survive, the show where I talk about an anime's English dub for a bit and probably offend some people with my opinion or some of the things I say. And we have a laugh. You all point and get mad at me or something. And yeah, hope everyone's having a good day. And I am glad to be back here talking about Neon Genesis Evangelion, one of the most divisive anime ever created. It's no secret, you'll either think this anime is a masterpiece in psychological storytelling, or pretentious as all hell. If you're wondering the camp I fall in, well, it's one of my favorite mecha, probably one of my favorite anime of all time, actually, at this point. Anyway, we are specifically talking about the rebuild of Evangelion Films, though. You see, it led in from the joke from last time when we talked about 3 Delivery, for I said I was getting back to my roots at the end of that. Those who follow our YouTube channel will know that I did a video discussing both Ava dubs back in the day, 2019. Yes, back in the day was two years ago. But I never really brought up the rebuild films all that much. So let's remedy that by comparing the rebuild films English dubs. Yeah, these have two dubs now. And because I couldn't get enough Ava, I ended up watching both the Funimation dub and the new Amazon Prime English dub back to back. That's six films of one through three and one through three again. You might be asking, what about 3.0 plus 1.01 1 Thrice Upon a Time? Why is the final film called that? We'll cover that next time. I wanted to dedicate these three comparing the dubs to its own thing first. That way it wasn't too convoluted. And it would kind of be difficult to title all of it together like that. Anyways, if I were to include the fourth film. Anyway, let's get into this. So, first, about Rebuild of Evangelion. Can you start here without watching the original anime? I suppose you could, but I wouldn't recommend it. I actually feel that these films, a lot more is taken in and has more impact with some of the scenes, huh? Second impact, third impact, see what I did there? Anyway, fans of this show are going to get that joke and want to slap me for it. Um... A lot of scenes have more impact if you're familiar with the original anime. You know, spot the difference, basically. There's also a popular fan theory that these films are actually a sequel to the original anime. I can't say more without spoilers, but that's neither here nor there. As far as me, I could see that being the case. I haven't seen the final film yet. I'm going to immediately after this is over. Trust me, I have held back from watching it, and it has been very difficult to do. But that aside... I guess let's get into this. So, Neon Genesis Evangelion was an anime that aired in the 90s, created by Hideaki Anno, with these rebuild films coming out around a decade later, running from 2007 to 2012 for the third film. Funimation would license these films and give them a proper English dub for the first three, with the third film coming out several years after its theatrical release in Japan, for numerous theoretical reasons. One popular one seems to be that um, the studio in Japan did not want Funimation to botch this English dub, so they were overseeing everything in the process. Which I should mention, the Blu-ray for Funimation's Evangelion 3 is complete crap. Not the visual quality, the audio quality. I don't know what happened, but... Everything comes in so quiet. You have to turn your volume up super high to hear anything. The main menus are also very bland, too, which is, I know, a weird thing to nitpick, but comparing it to the first two Blu-rays Funimation put out, it's just a boring menu with no sound effects or anything. It is as basic as one could get. I know, Funimation's screwing something up. Who would have thought? Anyway, I'm not going to go too deep into the history or what studio that did, um the Ava films in Japan, mainly because I want to focus on the two English dubs here, since it's called Dubster Dive. But, yeah. Needless to say, Funimation would end up losing the license to the rebuild films. I don't know when, but apparently it happened. And now they're falling into the hands of Amazon Prime, who launched the English dub for all four rebuild films on August 13th, a few days ago. Friday the 13th. I knew it was lucky day for Ava fans. Anyway, so now that we've gotten that out of the 
away. Ava, how to break down the story. It's one of those, I don't think anything I say could do it justice, honestly. Um, I guess you could say it's a post-apocalyptic mecha that also deals with a lot of psychological issues of growing up, maturing, figuring out who you are and who you want to be. Yes, you. But no, it deals with a lot of really heavy themes. And like I said, I highly recommend checking it out. But moving on from that, let's get to everything else. Animation, it's movies. I don't think I need to say any more of that. Heavy budget was put into them, so the thing looks really sexy from what everyone says. The OST is done by Shiro Sagisu, which anyone who's watched our Bleach retrospective will know we love his music. Everyone here at Empire X does. The man is a master at crafting epic OST that pushes it over the top. But I guess it's time to get to the English dub itself. So first, the ADR directors for the Funimation dub was Mike McFarlane, whereas for the Amazoo English dub was Joe Fryer. Not really familiar with this dude, but oh well. They also both casted themselves as ad voices in their respective dubs, because they're pricks. But at least they're not main characters, right? Anyway, first we have our main character, Shinji Ikari. Someone you either think is brilliantly written, or is an annoying whiny bitch. Take your pick, I guess. Curious to hear what everyone's thoughts is on him are. If you're wondering my thoughts, yeah, I could see either argument. I actually don't mind Shinji, though. But, I don't know. That's just me. Anyway, in both dubs, he is voiced by Spike Spencer. Thank you! That was the issue I had with a Netflix dub, for fuck's sake. Netflix's dub, bringing in Casey McGillia to play him, did not fit at all. And the reasoning to do it simply because Casey identifies as non-binary was complete bullshit. I'm sorry, someone should get an acting role, or a role in something, period, based on their talent and credibility. Not simply because they identify as this way or that, or their sexuality or anything. That is simply how I feel. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in that thought process. Regardless, Spike Spencer is back, and if you want my thoughts, he does good in both English dubs. I will nitpick a couple of things, though. Um, he doesn't... his screams sound a little off in the Amazon dubs. They don't sound as good to me personally. Maybe you'll disagree with me on that, I don't know. But it's not bad, it's just I feel like the Funimation dub, he nailed it perfectly. Whereas in the Amazon dub, it's almost perfect, if that makes sense. Like, it's 90 out of 100, whereas the Funny dub was 100. Which, I mean, makes sense. The Funimation dub for these films was running from 2010 to 2015, give or take. With the Amazon dub, it's 2021. You know, not as young as he used to be, as it were. Spike Spencer is known for voicing Hanatoro from Bleach, as well as Rolo from Code Geass, Inojin from Boruto, and Arakune, or Arachne, from the Blaze Blue franchise. Probably some of his most famous roles. But, um, yeah, he will always be Shinji to me. And I am grateful Amazon got him back. In fact, they got a lot of people back, as you're going to notice. Next, we have Misato, who a lot of people waifu the hell out of. Misato is voiced by Alice and Keith Ship in both English dubs. Again, thank you, Amazon. I can't believe I'm saying that either when it comes to Amazon dubbing something. Wait, Amazon's dubbing anime now? Guess I should have reacted to that earlier. But anyways, <laughs> the late reaction... Um, Misato, or Allison Keith Ship, is known for voicing Leone from Akame Ga Kill, Melissa Mao from Full Metal Panic, Kathleen McMahon from Razafon, which Heard Sentai um, put out a Blu-ray for that. Awesome. Now you people can experience that show. It's, it's a good show. I like it. But anyway, um, I'd have to say, at least in the first Ava Rebuild film, on the Amazon version, she doesn't sound as good to me. Again, it could just be me, and I'm not trying to be one of those oh, nitpicky assholes. I'm just giving my thoughts. I, I think she sounded better in the Funimation dub, at least for Rebuild 1. 2 and 3, I feel she did a lot better on, personally. In both in both dubs, she's fine in 2 and 3. But yeah. After her, we have Asuka, which by the way, yes, I am Team Asuka all the way. If anyone else is, shout out to you. 
Tiffany Grant and both English dubs. Thank you again. All right, I'm going to stop saying that now. Tiffany Grant has voiced Ren Ren and Chivalry of a Fail Knight. I know someone requested that. We'll probably get to it at some point. Emma and Cross Angel, Rondo of Angels and Dragons. I've heard that show is very bad. Please don't, don't ask me to watch that. As well as Kotori and My Sister is among them. And yeah, I, I think she nailed it in both English dubs. It honestly does not matter which one you watch. I think she did a good job in both. A lot of her line delivery is exactly the same. And I don't mean they took Funimation's dub and just spliced it on. You can tell it's a different delivery, but she basically, Tiffany Grant knows Asuka. I don't think anyone in the English speaking language knows her as well as Tiffany Grant does. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. So next we have Ray Ayanami, who we finally get a different person here in both dubs. In Funimation, it is Brina Palencia, not Peninsula. I've learned how to read since that first discussion on this a couple of years ago. Anyway, Brina Palencia is known for voicing Mineta in My Hero Academia. <laughs> uh, Mineta causing the internet to shit the bed on Twitter. Chopper in One Piece. You know Gossai in Future Diary, and Juvie in Fairy Tale. And she did all right as Rey. I, I have no complaints. But let's compare her to Rey's original, Amanda Wen Lee. Yes, the asshole herself. Known for voicing Yukiko in Persona 4, Oya in Persona 5, and Alita in Battle Angel Alita. The animated version, the OVA from like 20 plus years ago. Not the James Cameron movie, obviously. Um, okay, bias aside, I think both of them did okay. Everyone knows because I'm a Vic Stan, I have no love for Amanda Winley. Even without being a Vic Stan, I think she's kind of an asshole, which is saying something coming from me. But, um, yeah, I think either way you're fine here. Brina Palencia did a fantastic job um, with race since she had to replace somebody. And she even said herself on one of the Ava commentaries that... She had never seen the original anime before, but she felt that Rey was not emotionless, that it's just her emotions are buried deep inside her, so she tried bringing that to the forefront. I think she did all right. So, either way works, I suppose. Part of me is also happy they did get in the most of the original cast back, so Amanda Winley might not like you, but I guess it's good you got to come back as Rey one last time. Next, we have Gendo Ikari, Shinji's asshole dad, voiced by John Swayze in both dubs. He's probably known for Crocodile from One Piece. Ah, see, in 3 Delivery, we had the four kids dub of Crocodile. Now we got the Funimation dub of Crocodile from One Piece and Hades from Fairy Tail. A bunch of other stuff, too. But honestly, if I start listing off like 15 roles for everyone, we're going to be here all day. We've got a lot to get through. Um, I'd say he's good in both dubs. It depends on which delivery you prefer, because I'd say there are some scenes in the Funimation dub when he's getting, when he's um, talking down to Shinji, he sounds frustrated with him. But in the Amazon dub, he's yelling at him straight out. So it depends. Do you want Gendo yelling at Shinji more, or do you want him talking down to him like a smug asshole more? Personally, I think both work. I know I'm not being very decisive here, but... Mm, I guess if I had to pick one, I guess Smug Gendo works better, but yeah. Anyway, after him we have Ritsuko, the, I guess, tech person of the organization fighting off the angels. Um, voiced by, in the Funimation dub, Colleen Clinkenbeard, Luffy from One Piece, Urza from Fairy Tail, and Charlotte from Black Clover. Whereas in the Amazon dub, she is Mary Faber, someone I've never heard of before this video. Known for voicing Medusa in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, and Catherine in Parks and Recreation, as well as a bunch of other cartoons. And even some live-action stuff, from what I could tell. Um, I might prefer Colleen here. I don't know. I, I Again, both work, but if you were asking me to pick one, I'd probably go with Colleen. But, yeah. Next, we have Kaji. In the Funimation dub, he's voiced by J. Michael Tatum, Sebastian from Black Clover, um, Mira from Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and a thousand other roles. 
Anyway, Kaji, I think Michael Tatum might actually work better here, and I'll explain why in a second. Right now, actually. On Amazon's side, he's voiced by Sean Burgos, or Burgess, however you want to pronounce that. Zach Cromwell from Levius. I knew I wasn't done with you yet, Levius. And from everything else I could look up, he seemed to have been ad voices in Assassin's Creed, Just Cause, and several other games. Like I mentioned during the Levius review last year, he doesn't really seem to do anime all too often. He's mainly a live-action person. But I think he fit better as a character like Zach Cromwell and Levius because he was the older mentor. Kaji is... how old would you place him? Maybe late 20s? Michael Tatum does a better job making him sound there. Sean makes Kaji sound like he's 40 or 50. Like, I, I don't know. It doesn't fit as well, in my opinion. And I know I'm praising Funimation for doing something right, especially with Michael Tatum, who's, well, been very spoken towards Kick Vic, or, uh, you know, on the side of Kick Vic. But it doesn't matter. Putting biases aside here. I will say one of the line changes, though. There's a scene where Kaji's hitting on Shinji, and in the Funimation dub, he says, gender has got nothing to do with love. While in the Amazon dub, he says, love is gender blind. Oh, I know it. Trust me. The first time I saw Stofo and Fate Apocrypha. I mean, um, anyways. Yeah, so this is a point for Funimation, I feel. Afterwards, we have Toji. One of Shinji's best friend coons, as it were. In the Funimation dub, he's voiced by Justin Cook. Yusuke from Yu Yu Show, um, Jack the Ripper from Black Clover, and Raditz. Can't forget Raditz. Raditz over here is better as Choji. Let me explain. In the Amazon dub, he's voiced by Brett Weaver, which is actually a reprisal from the ADV dub, believe it or not. He's also Tora from Ushio and Tora, Gunther from Attack on Titan, and Morgan from One Piece. The problem is, Brett Weaver makes Toji sound way too damn old. And I mean that, too. Like, how old would you put Toji? Teenager, right? Brett makes him, again, sound like he's in his 40s. Justin Cook is at least trying to make him sound like, you know, an angsty youth. But, yeah. I think Brett Weaver probably did much better with voicing him in the past, but probably because he was 20-plus years younger then. I don't know. Let me know if you agree with me or not on any of these, by the way. Afterwards, we have Shinji's other friend, Kun, Kensuke. In the Funimation dub, it's voiced by... Or, he's voiced by Greg Aris, who was Kaoru in the ADV dub. I don't know why they didn't just get him to reprise Kaoru here. But, um, yes, he's also Frost in Dragon Ball Super and Ganta in Dead Man Wonderland. Whereas in the Amazon dub, he is voiced by Alejandro Saab, or the Suave Man, as I've nicknamed him. You'd all probably know him better as Kagi Films. He's Charlotte from Dragon Ball Legends and Mia Morta from Horimiya, some of his more notable roles. Um... If I had to pick one, this is another one where they both work. I, I think both are fine. I I'm sorry if you were expecting some epic showdown debate between some of these, but I don't really have much complaints here. But yeah, moving on. Now we have Mari Illustrious Makinami. That is how you pronounce that last name. Which, okay, if I'm going to be honest, I am Team Asuka, but if you wanted a second place pick from me... Team Mari also. Anyway, in the Funimation dub, she is voiced by Trina Nishimura, who's known for voicing Mikasa from AOT, Kurisu from Steins Gate, and Jiro from My Hero Academia. Whereas in the Amazon dub, she is voiced by Deneen Melody, who is Pandora from ReZero, Akami from JoJo, and Nono from Misfit of Demon King Academy. Uh, I'm gonna be honest... I'm probably gonna side with, um, I don't know, actually. Because I've heard her voice in Weebanese a little bit, and it sounds like Deneen got closer. But Trina didn't really do a bad job either. Mm. Both are fine. I, I guess I'll go with Deneen this one if I had to pick one. 
Anyway, moving on from that, the infamous character that Netflix fucked up in their dub. <sighs> okay, Kaoru. Kaoru, for those who don't know, it's implied that he's gay. Netflix, when they got their hands on the dub, decided to alter that and say, No, nah, bitch. Sorry. How did that even go in the boardroom? So, uh, yeah, this guy Kaoru. It's implied he might have, you know, those feelings for pro tycoon Shinji. Yeah, no, we gotta cut that out. Got no room for queers here in Netflix anime land. I'm sorry, but that really pisses me off. Fuck you, Netflix. And this isn't even one of those, all oh, you know, woke things. No, they altered the story, all right? For no reason, either. Anyway, enough on that, though. Let's get back to this. On dubs that don't fuck with the script in any um, um, broken ways. So, Kaoru in the Funimation dub is voiced by Jerry Joel, who most of you would probably know as Kyo from Fruits Basket, Licked from Black Clover, or... Leon from Fairy Tale. In the Amazon dub, it is voiced by, or he's voiced by Damon Mills. Ha! <laughs> ah, Chris Harris is under study as Frieza. Chris Harris will always be better as Frieza. Anyway, he's also Mitarima from Kuroko no Basket, or Kuroko's Basketball, and Motheus Johan from Saga Tanya the Evil. That is how you pronounce that dude's name in that show. Anyway, um, if I had to pick. <sighs> Both are fine, but Jerry Joel probably wins. I, I think he did a better job with Kaoru. We're almost done with breaking down the dubs, and then I can compare the scripts. Yeah, it's a long one. Anyways, afterwards, we have Fuyutsuki, who is Gendo's best friend, I guess you want to call him that. In the Funimation dub, he's voiced by Kent Williams, Dr. Jiro, or father from Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. In the Amazon dub, it is J.B. Karliak, who is a reprisal from the Netflix dub. Oh, goody. Anyway, he's also Dr. Nefarious from Crash Bandicoot 4 and Vision in a lot of the Marvel animated stuff. Kent Williams wins. I don't know what direction they were giving J.P. Karliak here, but a lot of his sound or delivery sounded really flat. Maybe that was what they were trying to go for for Fuyutsuki, but either way, I was not a fan. Um, I'm sure JP does better jobs elsewhere. I've never heard him before, um, Ava, to be honest. He doesn't seem to do much other anime from everything I could tell, but yeah. Anyway, the last character we have to go over is Sakura, or Toji's sister, who's Felicia Angel in both English dubs. Mona from Genshin Impact, we talked about her as Miku from Quintuplets, and Shoutier from Overlord. She does a good job in both dubs. Enough said. Now, as far as ad voices, you can tell one is definitely dubbed out of California, being as how there's like 15 Todd Abercorns, Alejandro Saab voices a bunch of characters, even though he's already a major recurring one. And Kyle Bear seems to be an ad voice or two in both English dubs as well. Never change. Always whore out the Kyle. Anyway. Um, yeah. I guess time to get to the scripts and other things I picked up on. So in the first Ava film, Shinji constantly says no one needs me in the Funimation dub, while in the Amazon dub, he says no one wants me. Both sound similar, but with Shinji's character, he wants to be... I, I, I guess he wants to feel needed. Both lines work, but I don't know. When he says no one needs me, it fit better in my head, I guess. Felt better to me. I already brought up uh, Spike's screams not sounding as solid in the f first couple of Rebuild films. Again, it might have also been because he already did this before and was thinking, fuck, why do I gotta do this again? Anyway, aside from that, one other thing I noticed, Gendo calls the main organization Sele, while everyone else calls it Zella. First of all, it's Gila, as in Soul. You know, Soul in German. Hence why in Bleach, Uryu's Soul Cutter Sword is called the Gila Schneider. But at least it's better than Zeal, right, Netflix dub? Okay, tangent for a sec. How is it 
we've had five Ava dubs, right? The ADV dub, the director's cut final episodes dub, the rebuild films have two dubs, and the Netflix dub. And no one's gotten it right. I guess Zella's really close, though, to be fair. So Amazon's probably the closest. Still, though, it's kind of funny hearing, uh, I guess John Swayze fell back into the Hobbit or habit of calling it Zele since he's been calling it that for almost 20 years since the director's cut days. Anyway, I guess other things to note, Mari, um, whenever she sings, because she sings um, a little bit, her songs are different in both dubs. So, yeah, they actually dubbed her singing for the most part. Speaking of which, in the second film, um, Asuka and Shinji, when they're talking in bed, you know what I mean? Um, when Shinji asks if he can call Asuka by her first name, she brings up the continuity saying, in the Amazon dub at least, well, you called me Asuka during when we were fighting the angel, right? So go ahead, but I'm going to call you idiot Shinji. And the Funimation dub, she never even brought up that. So Amazon gets the point, in my opinion, here. Because, you know, it fits better with the continuity they were going for. Anyway, we're almost reaching the end of this. Some of the last things I picked up on were in the third Ava film. In the opening sequence, when everyone's talking about, Oh shit! Stuff's going haywire! Mari's singing isn't dubbed in the Amazon dub in this one scene. In the Funimation dub it is. I'm guessing Amazon probably figured or whoever, uh, Joe Fryer or whatever, the ADR director, was thinking, well... No one's going to hear it over everyone screaming and shouting in the background. Haha, <laughs> tell that to a person with trained ears. No, nah, but seriously, um, it is kind of an immersion breaker when you hear one of the main characters singing in Weebanese in the background while everyone is screaming and panicking. That being said, I did notice something else with the third film that I feel it did better than the Funimation dub. Shenji and Kaoru's relationship with the dialogue. You see, in the Funimation dub, they just call each other Shinji and Kaoru. Whereas in the Amazon dub, they refer to each other as Ikari and Nagisa, their last names. Until about halfway through the movie, when they get closer, Kaoru says, just call me Kaoru, don't call me Nagisa anymore. And Shinji says, okay, then you call me Shinji. I feel that actually demonstrates how close they've become, more so than the Funimation dub did, personally. If you disagree with me on that, that's fine. But, yeah. Anyway, I guess the last couple of things to notice, the spears of Longinus and Cassius and the Funimation dub, they call them Longinus and Cassius, whereas in the Amazon dub, it's Longinus and Cassius. No complaints, just nitpicking something and pointing it out, I guess. Anyway, both dubs seem to have the filters on point when the character is in a mech or wearing a helmet or something. I think Amazons are slightly more consistent, but that's neither here nor there. And I guess that brings us right along to the end of this. If I had to pick one to rewatch again, it might be the Funimation dub, but just barely. Both dubs are fine, and I'm happy to say that, especially because the Amazon dub is more readily available for people to access now. I remember when Evangelion came out on Netflix a couple years back, and people were asking to watch it, I actually had to tell one of our friends, J-Rock, for those who don't know, he's been on a few of our MK videos, um, I recommended him to wait and see if he can find a way to watch the ADV dub. But here, I'm confident I could say you'd enjoy either dub. Both are fine. Both are perfectly serviceable, neither butcher the script in any way or fuck with any characters from what I could tell. Um... If I'm wrong, someone I guess will point it out, but to me at least, I think both dubs are solid. The only reason I prefer the Funimation one is one, Shinji, I think Spike did better, and uh, Allison did better in the first Rebuild film. The singing is dubbed with, like, all of Mario's singing is dubbed, all 100%, instead of just 90%. And less recycled ad voices. But if you want me to real stand with Vic ass, so I could just say also the Funimation dub doesn't have Amanda Wen Lee. But it does have Monica Royale as an ad voice, so either way you're screwed, I guess. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. I hope you all really enjoyed this. I absolutely love Evangelion, and if you haven't seen it yet, please go do. No matter which dub you watch, go check it out. Next time, we're going to be talking about Evangelion 
3.0 plus 1.01 thrice upon a time. So I hope you all will join me for that. I can't wait to watch the film any longer. I got to see it. I, I want to know all the heads, damn it. It's been a long time coming. And yeah. Also, quick shout out to Amazon for bringing back the majority of the old cast. I'm actually really happy about that. And I hope they continue to dub more animes in the future now. Because a lot of times they'll get it. People say, oh, it's an Amazon or Netflix jail. Look, at least Netflix dub their anime. Amazon doesn't. Usually we have to wait years and years for someone to license it from them and pry it away. But anyways, I'm just, I guess, going on a tangent. But all right. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts and if you agree on anything I said or disagree or anything like that. And yeah, till next time.